technology guy, so clearly technology can be the solution to every problem in the world. But, but I, I think there definitely is an opportunity for industries that have perhaps not seen IT as perhaps core to their business, but not a driver and a, a, an innovator inside their business to change that mindset slightly and look at how technology can help them regain efficiencies, perhaps improve collaboration where we're not able to collaborate face to face in the way we were previously. I think the rise of cloud computing generally has certainly enabled that. You know, we have SaaS applications that people no longer need to deploy on, you know, by buying something and putting it in a, a workshop or an office or a data center. You can just go on, trial something with very limited commitments a lot of the time as well and very little capital expenditure. So for me, being able to look around what there's a huge plethora of IT solutions and and SaaS services to see what can we do to enable our workforce better, be that something that relates to the individual on the shop floor, or whether that's management information, whether that's time tracking, or whether that's looking at how we're currently spending our time and what efficiency gains we can have in there. I think those will be key drivers that IT can certainly help with. Absolutely. I, I think for, for me, James, I think you bring up a, um, you know, an absolutely brilliant point, you know, the, the part that IT and technology plays in that. Um, I find it quite fascinating at the moment when, when we look at what we were doing as organisations, regardless of the industry that we're in yesterday. Um, you know, the norm would have been, we'd be having this conversation probably face to face. I would have been jumping in the car, um, we'd be setting up certain pieces of equipment and, uh, and having, this, uh, having this conversation together. Whereas today um, we've jumped on, we've just logged ourselves on online, we've clicked a button and, and here we are um, engaging, communicating, you know, managing a set of processes using, um, using readily available technology. Um, and I think that's the point, uh, James, that I, I, I certainly see, um, you know, this to get ourselves to the best possible place. How is it it's so much about engaging people, engaging processes? managing people, communicating, you know, these fundamental cornerstones of, of, of um, how to manage a business. And in today's world, technology is, 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 is allowing us to do that um, on a minute by minute basis. So how we can extend that engagement, that communication, that management using plug and play technology within the manufacturing industry, I think is that absolute key for us going forwards. Yeah, I, I think you're dead right. And, and one of the things I think people will very much look to going forwards is we came from, you know, the, the old norm, as everybody talks about the new norm. I guess you've got the old norm. Therefore, we talk about the old norm and what there was. You just mentioned jumping in a car, going and having a meeting face to face. Now we're in the current norm, which is we can't go and meet face to face. And we'll enter a new norm, as, as the government keep referring to. And hopefully what people will take out of that is the best of the old world with what we've learned in this current situation. As you say, we can collaborate online. We perhaps don't need to spend our time in cars all the time. There will be times when face to face is absolutely essential. But can we use the technology sometimes to actually make ourselves more efficient in this new norm and question, do we really need to go all the way back to what we had before or are some of those technology innovations and the opportunity for our organizations to take them on you know do they present us with a more efficient structure in the uh, the new paradigm and the new world where we're hopefully about to enter relatively shortly very good and james you know something that sort of control pro of of ongoingly being an advocate of is cloud-based technology and um and software as a service now, we've certainly had conversations about um, you know, the, the adoption of that kind of technology and security um, over well, a good number of years now. Um, what are your thoughts about the appetite for now cloud technology and the whole security conversation? I, I genuinely believe the, the challenges, and they are challenges we're, we're clearly faced with now, have, have probably forced people in some ways to address whether they can use cloud technologies. And I think we're all seeing 
you know, the adverts on TV, the use of technology, people are understanding that it is much more secure than their perhaps intrinsic belief was. You know, there's perhaps this term, I often term server huggers. People want to be able to go and look at their piece of IT equipment and say, that's mine, and it's sitting under a desk or in a data center. And they didn't, there was a, a, a perhaps hesitation to adopt something that was nebulous and out there and just just in the cloud effectively. But I think this current situation has forced people to say, I need to use it. And then all of a sudden they were realizing that experience is actually really good. That ability to start something very quickly with no big capital expenditure, with no planning or particularly big procurement process. You know, it might be a credit card or it might be a commitment for a few pounds a month or whatever it is, an online service, but then going and seeing that immediacy of it. So I think there's two things we're seeing in this is one, people are realizing the immediacy of cloud technology. I can get this, I can try it and I can get going immediately. And they're also realizing the economics and the ongoing operational cost. I don't need an IT guy when it breaks, in my current environment, I need to go and get the IT guy to come in and have a look at it. In a cloud-based service, it just runs. And, and cloud-based services like the one offered by Total Control Pro, they are designed to be fully fault tolerant. They just run. You know, we use the, the cloud architecture that's provided by these large public cloud providers who have huge economies of scale and huge investments in their data centers. They've secured them. They have all of the accreditations for the security. And, and ultimately, you know, without naming any, any specific names, but you can imagine if, if I can run one of the biggest e-commerce sites in the world on that cloud platform, the security must be pretty darn good, right? But so I think the, the current situation has dispelled a lot of those security myths, but it's also shown people the, the true, as I keep talking about, the, the immediacy we can get out of cloud, that immediate value. And, you know, without wanting to sound like an American MBA student, it's that the, the return on investment, the, the time to value, et cetera, is really low with cloud solutions. Very good. Absolutely. And, and um, as we know, you know, the promise uh, that Total Control Pro has always stood in is being accessible available and affordable um, and um, and certainly uh, we there's no way in which we would be able to deliver on that promise without leaning on um, the um, the flexibility the immediacy and the availability of uh, of the cloud and being able to provide our applications through that um, and again going kind of going back to my analogy of previously where where organizations would have jumped in the car and, and, and had a meeting to engage, to communicate, to manage. Um, you know, our ability by using these kind of cloud-based technologies that uh, was yesterday a, a production manager, maybe with the customer at the end of the phone would have needed to either pick up the, the, the telephone to their, their, uh, um, their operations team or indeed walked onto a production floor to see the status of, of an order. Now, using that cloud, being able to just click on a button or looking up at a, a live production monitoring screen, getting that live real-time data, um, you know, that's that was certainly we see as being critical, uh, more critical now than ever before, to to optimize the use of resources and um, and to get ourselves uh, fully fit for you know the quarters and, and years ahead um, as we migrate ourselves through these slightly more challenging times. James, you've covered some really key points for us. And as we know at Total Control Pro, our promise has always been to be accessible, available, and affordable, and how to use cloud-based technologies so companies can effectively plug and play some, some readily available hardware and get uh, real-time visibility on their, on their order flow, um, their, their use of uh, their resources, the use of inventory, et cetera, et cetera. But that's never been more relevant and more important than it is right now. Um, obviously, inside the, the circumstances that we're dealing with right now, um, where um, whether we have those resources available to us, you know, inside COVID-19, being able to to uh, distance ourselves from our, from our work colleagues, but being able to ongoingly visualize and see what is going on by everybody, who's doing what, to be able to communicate remotely, but in real time is absolutely critical. So that whole re remote working where we've got some of the operational teams working from home, managing their production lines, 
we've got the critical key staff actually on the production lines to how to communicate, how to connect, and how to do that all in real time using um, simple plug and play te technology these days is, is absolutely critical. And I know, Dorian, we spoke in the past as well about one of the one of the things I find most compelling about uh, the Total Control products is that ability to work around the supply chain as well. So we all know that right now supply chains are disrupted. There was the initial supply chain halt when all of a sudden China wasn't manufacturing for a period in time. I think that's something really powerful in the product as well, that we, we, you know, with all the will in the world, I don't think anybody expects supply chains to be back to smooth, uninterrupted flow for some time now. So to be able to do that and visualize that out of the product, I think is a, is a really key advantage for organizations. You know, organizations are facing the double edged sword where they want to be lean, but if they don't have the components in and the production grinds to a halt and they can't ship stock out the front door, then they can't sell anything, which stops the money coming in. Yeah, I completely agree, James. You know, we've come through a period where it's been all about lean. It's about how we can get inventory down to be as um, as refined as possible inside this lean conversation. Well, the conversation's certainly moved on from that. Yes, lean is critical. We know that. But as you say, how uh, in a in a potentially disrupted supply line, how we can, yes, maintain a lean approach, but also we've got enough fat to the bone um, to cater for disruptions and how to model that inside of a uh, an ongoingly changing demand. Well, that's what technology is there for. You know, that is where we can bring products like Total Control Pro into play to to understand a demand that is continuously changing, but how to optimize the amount of inventory that is that is held on site, um, literally in real time, is something that um, we know is going to be incredibly important going forwards. So, James. Why now? Why cloud-based technology, software as a service? Why is that so important within manufacturing? You know, ultimately, right now, cloud is de rigueur. It is very much the hot topic across the IT industry. And I think it would be fair to say that industries such as construction, engineering, manufacturing, et cetera, have perhaps, whilst they've seen the robotics advantage, perhaps not seen the software and the IT systems advantage that potentially have, we've, we've seen in other sectors. And right now, I think that's changing. The opportunity to, to take on new services offered as SaaS solutions, as software as a service, are presenting themselves to manufacturing organizations and presenting them with operational benefits and competitive advantage. For me, the major benefits of SaaS for organizations is, as we talked about, that capability to just go in, sign up with a credit card for a few pounds a month. And if you don't like it, you've got no long term commitment. Try it. If it works for you and you are getting the advantage, take it. If it doesn't work, you've really only lost a few pounds and you just cancel your subscription. And that's such a paradigm change from the old school IT mentality of we go through a procurement exercise, we size a system, we have to then go and buy a server, we have to put that server somewhere, we have to maintain that server, we have to have support contracts on it, we have to install the software and, and manage that software when it's on it. All of those things are streamlined, you know, allow a SaaS vendor such as Total Control Pro We'll do the management, we'll do the maintenance, we'll do the backup and recovery process, we'll worry about the scaling. You know, your job is to be a manufacturer and go and be that best of breed manufacturer that we know British manufacturing can be. Face the challenges you do now and allow us to be an IT company. For me, that, that's a really powerful message. And then looking at what the software can do, you know, we understand and we recognize right now that manufacturing organizations face that double-edged sword of increased cost potentially to cope with what is, in effect, a lumpy supply chain right now. But they have to do that because if you don't have the parts and the components to build your product and you're not shipping stuff out the front door, you don't have the money coming in at the same time. And that's exactly what our software allows people to do. Manage and optimize that. Look for problems and optimize around those areas where you have concerns. For me, that's what the technology is allowing us to do that we haven't had the capability to do before. Organizations, 
go on to so they don't want to employ programmers who build this stuff for them just want to use it so why let, let us focus on that and and that i think that's the key message with our cloud stuff now isn't it as well that if we program it allow us to support it you know we it's our software it's our ip therefore we can support it more cost effectively than organizations allow them to be the business every penny you spend on supporting an it system is a penny you can't spend on retooling or paying your staff better or you know benefits for the staff or ppe or whatever it may be at the moment one of the other areas i think it can definitely help with is social distancing in itself you know, ultimately IT systems and especially cloud-based solutions have very much blurred the lines between what is on-premises and what is off. So that work from home, you know, we very much have the capability to blur the lines between where people are in the world. One of the key advantages of SaaS is it doesn't matter if you're in the office or at home or on a beach somewhere with your laptop software is still available to you you always access the software remotely therefore it doesn't matter where you are physically located at any one point in time that social distancing you know you are able to say to your staff and perhaps that's managers or operational staff you don't need to come into the office but you can still get visibility on what everybody is doing in real time you can still do your job but without putting yourself and other people at risk by coming in and perhaps breaking social distancing regulations. So that, that's a key area that IT can really, really help with is that blurring the lines and software as a service is a key enabler for that because it's always available remotely. Therefore, you don't need to go through a process of saying, how do I expose the systems I've currently got in my factory or my manufacturing facility? How do I expose those two people no matter where they are? And how do I do that in a secure fashion? SaaS software like Total Control Pro has solved that for you already.